Hello, my name is Brian Mulligan and in this short video we'll be just looking at some tips and tricks to create good multiple choice quizzes. Okay, first of all I'd like to say why would you choose multiple choice questions? I have to say I do have a preference for multiple choice questions, possibly because they're the simplest to create. Now multiple response is a version of multiple choice questions where there are more than one correct answer. Short answers, you've got to worry about students or learners misspelling words. Hotspots use images and you've got to define certain areas of an image that are correct or incorrect. It's often easier just to include a labeled image and have a multiple choice question asking to select which label is correct. Matching questions, really we have match items in one list with, with another, they can often be reformatted as multiple choice questions and are easier to write. So that's my own preference for multiple choice questions. Okay, so I said I was going to give you some helpful tips on creating good multiple choice quizzes. First of all, I'd say consider writing your quizzes in a text editor. You can try to directly input your quiz questions into the platform you use, but often that platform can be tricky to edit. It has boxes to fill. It might be simpler to do it in a neutral format or an accepted format like the GIFT format and then import it. Import a whole series of questions in, in one go. Okay, here's an example of the GIFT format where you might write a question title for yourself. The learner doesn't see that. Then you'd write the stem of the question, the question text. Uh, then you would have within these curly braces that you see here, you would have a correct answer with the equal sign in front of it and the approximately equal sign to the in front of the incorrect answers, also known as the distractors. Now you can type out this very quickly once you get used to it. And remember, when you import it into your platform, you may be able to edit it then. You should be able to edit then if you're not happy with it. So this is the quickest way to pr prepare your questions. Okay, it's suggested that you have three to five distractors. If you have less than three, if you have only two, luck plays too big a part in it. If you have over five, um, it can make the question more difficult to answer. I have to say, if I had to choose, I would prefer to go for six options rather than two, err on the high side, but keep it between three and five distractors. Okay, don't worry about shuffling your answers. Most platform will shuffle the alternatives for you because if you do shuffle them, you'll tend to have a bias towards a particular position which the learners can often guess. So that'll make the questions a little bit easier and skew your results. Three types of questions to avoid. That is difficult, easy, and trick questions. Trick questions could be considered to be very difficult questions. If your questions are too difficult, generally people will score low and your test will not be able to discriminate between those people who do know a lot and those who do know a little. And by the same token, if your questions are too easy, they won't help discriminate. Everybody will tend to score highly and they won't help discriminate between those that know a lot and those that know a little. Trick questions add an element of luck because people who actually know the information or knowledge may not be able to answer these trick questions and people will guess them. So they're not really helpful. Implausible distractors. You're trying to think of, of incorrect answers uh, and you think of some wild things. The students know they're not true, they're implausible, so you're not really testing their knowledge. You could say that these questions are just too easy. So try and think of plausible distractors. A good way to do that, by the way, is often to ask learners a question and let them give you answers. And then you'll find that learners have lots of plausible distractors. Okay, in the words of the song, uh, accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative. If you have 
negatives in questions, it can confuse students. Now, generally, you have to do it, but there's one thing you must avoid are double negatives. This is a question here is which one of the following is false? London is not in the UK. It can take students a bit of thinking to get around the logic in that. And remember, you're often not testing them on log logic. We're testing them on some geography here. So avoid double negatives. It tends to confuse and makes the question unnecessarily difficult. The options should generally look similar, particularly in their length. Here's one here we have a correct answer, a wrong answer, a very long wrong answer, and another few wrong answers. That wrong answer will draw students' attention. Generally, people tend to write long correct answers. They're more correct and more, or they're longer and more precise, but it draws students to them. So avoid writing longer correct answers. They'll be a little bit too easy. By the same token, avoid writing longer incorrect answers because it will attract students away from the correct answer and make the question unnecessarily difficult or generally unfair. Be careful when combining options. Again, uh, this would tend to attract students. So if you are going to combine options, make sure you try to do all the combinations so you're not showing any bias towards them. Avoid all of the above and none of the above. And we all tend to use these just to put in an extra option. Um, these tend to attract the student, students. So try to avoid them. Try to think of plausible distractors. And avoid clues in the stem. Often you have a question and there's a word in the stem and then the word also appears in the correct answer or another version of the word appears in the answer. That is a clue to the students that this might be the correct answer. So make sure that you don't have any clues in the stem that would uh, lead them to select the correct answer. Consider how learners misunderstand. From your experience of teaching and knowing how learners make mistakes in the past, base some of your questions on those typical mistakes. Now that will also improve your teaching as well and those mistakes may disappear. But those mistakes do tend to persist, so you can base your questions on how you know that learners tend to misunderstand the material. If your platform can do this, make more questions than you need and put them in banks of questions. Then each time a student tries the quiz, it will draw questions randomly from the bank of questions, so they won't get the same questions every time. This will tend to force them to go back over the materials to learn it before they te try the test again. So how do we get these question banks? Well, it can be hard thinking up of questions, but you can often think up of multiple versions of the same question. They're almost correct. If you're lucky enough to be doing mathematical questions, often you can get tools that will generate multiple versions of the same questions with different numbers in them, but it will be the same basic question. It's important to spread the questions evenly over the content that you have covered. It would be unfair to cover one part of the content and not another. So it's often a good idea to step through your content and think of questions at each new idea that you present in your content. Grammar. Well, firstly, it's important that your grammar be correct. But it's also important that your grammar be similar in all your alternatives. Otherwise, you'll attract students to the correct or the incorrect answers. And lastly, what about getting a second reader to read over your questions and see what they think, get their advice? Okay, that's it. I hope you found the video useful.